July's momentary celebration of 5% interest rates, August ended the month at 6, then September just finished having crossed 7%. I mean, only a few months ago, six and a quarter seemed like the absolute ceiling as the U.S. continued its strong stance against a slowing global economy. But that didn't last. We saw European economies bear the brunt of Russia's war on Ukraine, Japan struggling with lower global demand for its manufactured goods, and China's economic troubles thanks to its zero COVID policy. All of these strengthening the dollar while creating incredible volatility for our mortgage bonds. Which, by the way, is why half of your friends are in Switzerland or Italy right now. Meanwhile, the fight here in the United States is the fight against inflation. For the last few years, we've seen too many dollars chasing too few goods, pushing the price of those goods up as demand spiked. The Federal Reserve's job now is to constrain the dollars spent I mean, think about this, 28% of all goods purchased are done with a credit card. That doesn't even include car loans, home loans, business loans, etc. Buying on credit creates money, future money pulled forward, giving you access to a product or service today for payment in the future. In order for the Fed to control spending, they have to make the cost to borrow higher. So it creates more pain. At the same time, the benefit of savings has also gone up. As the Fed raised their Fed rate or overnight rate, so goes the one-year Treasury. The safest of all investments is backed by the federal government. This rate is 4.01% today, which is significantly higher than the long-term average of 2.85% and will increase further after November 2nd's Fed rate hike. Want a safe investment return? There's my tip for the day buy one-year treasuries. This rise in the Fed rate is creating demand destruction and lower demand for goods creates supply surplus. And when stores have too much product, goods go on sale. This eventually lowers inflation as prices go down. But first, we have to go through this destruction. We are seeing this play out in housing. While some homes and some neighborhoods are still seeing homes go for over asking or even in only a few days, the majority of the market slowed as we saw rates cross five and a half percent and certainly came to a halt when we saw them top seven percent. This plays out most clearly in our pending home sales. It dropped 15.4 percent month over month and 28 percent year over year. Seasonally, pending home sales would drop anyway, but higher rates are dropping them faster. We also saw median days on the market jump from an unhealthy five days last year to a more sustainable 16 days last month. This equates to a 220% increase. Yes, small numbers create fantastically dramatic percentages. September also saw more sellers at higher home prices coming on the market in response to higher priced buyers seemingly less rate sensitive. What was not expected was the push on rates above 7%, leaving more of those homes on the market as the month turned over. Active listings ended September up 10.7% from August, up 93.5% from last year, 45% from 2020, yet still down 17% from 2019. Less demand and more supply always results in lower prices. I mean, that's Econ 101. Our close to list dropped from 99.4% in August to 98.9% in September, with Detach feeling this a little more as buyers negotiated a 98.7 close to list. This slowed our average home price growth to 8.4% year over year. It slowed our median price growth to 9.4% year over year. But compare this to the median home sold in March. That was up a whopping 21%. Buyers will look at this as an opportunity. Home price is dropping. Sellers will look at this as lost value when compared to their neighbors. Ultimately, it's a correction. It's the housing correction Powell needed. The loss for most people is simply unrealized gains as home prices simply cannot go up 
21% without harming the housing market. 2021 finished the year with a 16.7% increase in the average close price in the DMAR 11 county area. That's the highest on record. Prior to 2020, the 30 year average increase had been six. This month's slowdown gives us a year to date average close price up 12.8%. With the fourth quarter seasonal slowdown and higher mortgage rates, I would expect 2022 to end in the high single digits. Still an incredibly strong return on a home investment. Less demand, more supply, lower prices will bring lower inflation. Lower inflation will bring the housing market lower interest rates. But when? This could start to happen as soon as this month, as the year-over-year -year comparison to last October through January will be seemingly lower, meaning monthly inflation was hot last fall. This year's numbers, as they are cooling off with release supply chain issues, will now be compared to the higher numbers last year, making the year-over-year -year comparisons smaller. We are also seeing the continued slowdown in our economic reports, like the construction spending, ISM manufacturing, and consumer spending all slowing. This slowdown, although arguably not recessionary yet, could drop into a recession should the Fed continue its exacerbated push on the Fed rate, creating a loss of employment. This looks most likely to happen in the spring. Recessions historically bring lower mortgage rates as the investment in longer term bonds is more appealing, pushing prices up and bond yields down. Watch inventory levels though as we finish this year. It will guide us as to how much any increase in demand with lower rates will stress our market. I believe rates could have a volatile sideways movement for the rest of this year, dropping back into the fives, some even predict fours, come late spring, early summer. This will keep our home prices from going negative and allow us to stabilize back to our normal 6% average price growth that Denver has come to rely on. Well, until next time, this is Nicole Ruth with the Ruth team of One Trust Home Loans. It's my pleasure to keep you updated.